three honorable speakers here. Uh, Ms. Rainisa Maini Herianto from Bachelor Program in Industrial Engineering, Universitas Kristen Maranatha, Indonesia. Dr. Rosemary Arseva from Industrial and Systems Engineering Department, the Lasal University Philippines. And the last but not the least, Dr. Wei Chung Xiang from Department of Industrial and Systems Engineering, Chung Yun Hello. Christian University. Hello, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Hello, good morning. Yeah, and thank you for the willingness and the available time to share the knowledge in your expertise to us here. In this seminar, we will hear from our speakers how industrial engineering could help and be implemented in our lives and business, although it is maybe the hardest situation for us uh, in the pandemic era right now. And it is really a great opportunity that we could gather here worldwide in one Zoom room only, and it is really, really amazing. We have uh, right now uh, actually 500 registrants. Uh, they are from uh, seven countries, Indonesia, Philippines, Taiwan, Singapore, Malaysia, Japan, and Australia. There are students, faculty members from 45 different universities, and I think it's also amazing. Uh, and, the, and then also the employees of some institution. We could give ourselves a big applause for our diversity here. Maybe you can also give the virtual applause right now. Yeah, and before we start the seminar, we will ask for God's guidance. I will pray in Christian way. The rest could follow in your own faith. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for all the blessings you have given us. We are truly grateful for them. Thank you for allowing us today to meet and share our knowledge and time with one another in this seminar. May you, may you bless uh, our three speakers and moderator so that they would be able to impart effectively the God-given knowledge to all of us. May they, uh, may they be blessed as they continue to bring their expertise to people who need them. Bless the participants as well so that they would be able to learn well from what speakers give. May you give your blessings after the seminar so that we may go out and spread what we learn. In the spirit of your love and generosity, thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Okay, right now, I would like to invite the Rector of Universitas Kristen Maranatha, Indonesia. Please welcome Professor Insinyur Sri Widiantoro, MSc, PhD, to give the opening speech. Thank you, Christina. Yeah. Very good morning, everyone. Welcome to you all to the online seminar on the implementation of industrial engineering in this COVID-19 pandemic. Special welcome to our guest speakers, Dr. Rosemary Sifa and also Dr. Wei Chongxiang, and of course also Ms. Rai Nisa from Maranatha Christian University. Thank you very much. We are very happy to having you all. Also, I would like to thank for the initiative from our colleagues to hold this seminar in collaboration with three universities, the Department of Industrial Engineering from the La Salle University, the Philippines, and from Chung Yuan Christian University, Taiwan, and of course from Maranatha Christ Christian University. I'm sure this seminar will be very useful for sharing knowledge among all the participants. And therefore, I hope this seminar can have a beneficial impact on the growth of cooperation among colleagues from not only these three universities, but also other universities. So without further ado, I would like to give this precious time to David, the moderator. All the very best. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Dr. Vidiantoro, for opening speech. Right now, Maybe you cannot wait anymore uh, of the main event. Uh, I would like to invite Mr. David Triliputra, STMT, the faculty member of Bachelor Program in Industrial Engineering Universitas Kristen Maranatha, Indonesia, as our moderator that will lead the seminar. Please welcome. Thank you, Ms. Christina. Good morning, everyone. I'm David. As Ms. Christina has mentioned before, I'm the moderator of today's seminar. 
I'm very happy to meet you all, even though only virtually, but I know we all are so excited to participate in today's seminar. So today's seminar will consist of two sessions. The first session is the sharing sessions from our speakers. We have three stunning speakers today. The first speaker is Ms. Rainisa Maini Herianto, STMT, from Universitas Kista Maranata, or we can call Maranata Christian University, Bandung, Indonesia. The second speaker is Dr. Rosemary Arseva from De La Salle University, Manila, Philippines. And the third speaker is Dr. Wei Chung Xiang from Chongyun Christian University, Taiwan. Three speakers will share their knowledge and experiences related to Indian learning. Ultimately, 20 minutes are given to each speaker in this session. For Ms. Rainisa, Dr. Seva and Dr. Xiang, good morning, and thank you for joining us today. Then in the second session is the Q&A session. So all participants are welcome to ask any questions to the speakers via the chat box in the below section of your Zoom meeting application by first introduce your name and also your university affiliation so you all will be recognized as well. And uh, please do not forget to mention to which speakers your questions are addressed to. Okay, now we will start the sharing session. Our first speaker, Ms. Rainisa, will share about supply chain management during and after pandemic in Indonesia. But before she start her presentation, please allow me to introduce more about her background. Okay, so Nisa was graduated from bachelor program in industry engineering, Universitas Krista Maranata in 2007. And she received her master degree in industrial engineering and management program from Institute Technology Bandung, Indonesia in 2011. Now she is a faculty member in industrial engineering, Universitas Krista Maranata, and also editorial team journal of integrated system or GIS. And from 2019 until now, she is the head of production system laboratory in Universitas Kristen Maranata. Her research interest is in production planning and inventory control, and also supply chain management. She also has certified professional in international supply chain by PASAS Singapore. And she has published many articles and journals in the field of her expertise. For Ms. Saidisa, you can start your presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. David. Good morning, everyone. My name is Renisa. First of all, I would say thank you to Industrial Engineering Universitas Kristen Maranata that gave me a great opportunity to share about supply chain management today. In this seminar, I will try to explain how is my opinion as an academic point of view based on some research also about supply chain management during and after pandemic in Indonesia. Let me start my slide. Okay. First, let's talk about supply chain management. When we talk about supply chain management, we will discuss about methods, tool, or approach to manage company network which work together to create and deliver good to end customer. The company's inside network consists of supplier who supply raw material to manufacturer, manufacturer who produce the product, distributor who distribute the product, retailer, and also supporting companies such as logistic company or delivery courier who deliver product to end customer. In supply chain management, there are four important flows. The first flow is flow of demand, flow of money, flow of information, and the last flow of demand. Sorry. Flow of good will move from upstream to downstream. 
flow of money as well as flow flow of, flow of demand will move from downstream to upstream and flow of information will move both from upstream to downstream and vice versa. Nowadays, coronavirus is a hottest break news around the world. Maybe since last year, about all February until nobody knows when the spread of this virus will really end. But we still wish all the best for the quick recovery, and soon we could activity normally. First case in first case in Indonesia was detected on March 2020. Since that time, so many policies took by some countries and also Indonesian government to protect their citizen, such as activity restriction, border movement between countries, even some countries decide to lock down. From this condition, situation report of World Health Organization have been analyzed and some research considered that coronavirus is a sign of Black Swan event. What is Black Swan event? Black Swan event is a metaphor that describes as event that comes as a surprise, has a major effect, and is often in, inappropriately rationalized after the fact with the benefit of hindsight. In the beginning of pandemic, this virus was never suspected to be a very dangerous virus. But it will be take time to overcome until now. This, this situation changes everything in our life, such as our behavior. Our mobility is limited to do some activities outside. Work from office changes into work from home. Not only work, but also study, worship, sport, and every activities. For Indonesia itself, this coronavirus gave big impact in some area, such as economy, tourism, social, transportation, and any others. Maybe same as another countries around the world. The consumer sector which contribute the most to economic growth will be the one that hurt the most. Based on Fortune ranking in 2020, production and material supply of 938 of the 1,000 companies have been severely affected. Given their tier one or tier two supplier are located in Wuhan, China, from where it is generally believed that the COVID-19 originated. And then 87% raw material for medicine are from China and India. This pandemic outbreak give not only negative impact, but also positive impact. Please take a look to this picture. This picture show us that in Indonesia, there are some categories product or shopping habit that have increasing demands during pandemic, such as food supply like frozen food, seasoning, instant food, instant food and another. The, the percentage of food supply about 76% Medicine about 61% such as vitamin, hand sanitizer, antiseptic, and any others. This percentage contrasts with product of beauty and fashion which only 6%. Electronic like TV only 4%. But there is an exception for electronic equipment like laptop, mobile phone, webcams, which have raising demand also because it is needed for online activity like school, like, like school or work. And then home furnishing and tools only 3%, and also automotive like car or motorcycle maybe less than 1%. For product that have high demand, the manufacturer will think about how to meet the demand. Increasing capacity could be the option, but maybe facing the limited supply because of supplier. Maybe raw material or spare part for production are supply for other countries which area are border because of this pandemic. In other hand, for product that have low demand, even no demand, the company have to think what they could do to survive during pandemic, unless the company will shut down. We often read or listen some company shut down because of this pandemic. For example, in this article, I got it from in newspaper that Indonesia garment or fashion industry in crisis. And then for survive, 
they switch into produce personal protective equipment or mask which have skyrocketing demand. I think this is a good opportunity. Is that condition give impact to supply chain management? The answer is absolutely yes, of course. What is the impact to supply chains? Some companies think to move from global supply chain to local supply chains. Companies tend to find near supplier and this action will affect the quality. Quality has a risk to decrease. People will look for substitution product. Companies change for efficiency to resiliency. For example, change their selling from offline into online. And distribution also will change from normal. This condition push the growth of e-commerce. Please take a look to this picture. This is the list of top 10 e-commerce in Indonesia. Their visiting and selling is rising during this pandemic. In this pandemic, our behavior to shop online will change into online. I'm pretty sure that in your mobile phone at least have one e-commerce application. It is quite easy and take a little time to shop online. Use your mobile phone, open the application, choose the product, finish transaction, and wait for delivery. And then, how often you shop online? Before pandemic, maybe once a month, but in last several months at home, the frequency will raise to once or twice a week. One that has positive impact from this condition is logistic companies or courier companies. Transformation behavior from offline to online like blessing in disguise for them. When, when the other companies fire their worker, the career company hire new workers and then their revenue is raising more than 30%. Especially when special event in Indonesia like October 10, November 11, or December 12, when shop give, give more discount to, the, to their customer. Obviously, delivery service will have skyrocketing demand. The second picture show us how is condition at one career company in Indonesia on last special event December 12. In fact, the delivery, the delivery higher than Hari Raya or Christmas. Which company will mitigate the impact from this pandemic? There are three types of companies. The first that some company are better prepared than others to mitigate the impact. These company have developed and implemented supply chain risk management and business continuity strategies. They have also diversified their supply chains for, from geographic perspective to reduce the supply side risk from any other country or region. They have multi-source key commodities or strategic component to reduce their reliance on any one supplier. And they had considered inventory strategy to buffer against supply chain disruption. The second type that some company are better prepared than others to respond to this event. This company have built strong relationship with key supplier and have push system, push system in place to provide visibility across the extended supply network to better understand, understand their risk and drive specific action based on their priorities. They develop agility with their production and distribution network to quickly reconfigure and maintain supply to global demand. And also they invested a supply chain planning and control tower solution to better sense and respond and even predict supply chain issues. The last is company, other company are scrambling. This company are overly reliant on a single geography or single supplier for key product. They don't have enough visibility across the extended supply network to see their risk. They don't have the system to understand their inventory status, to project stock out of direct material and optimize production, or to project stock out of finished good to optimize customer allocation, a, they don't have flexible logistic network and sure to flow of good in a profitable manner. Next. 
while this COVID-19 may be the catalyst for companies to revisit their global, global supply chain strategy and accelerate the adoption of digital supply chain network model and capabilities, short-term action need to be made to respond to the immediate challenge, especially in Indonesia. What should companies do during pandemic? The first is educate employee on COVID-19 symptoms and prevention. This is important to care of people and make it into first priority. Organizations should educate their staff as well as their key supplier about the symptom of the virus. It's our should review health record of staff. The second is reinforce screening protocols. Enforce precautionary measures where possible, supported by flexible sick leave policy. Lost productivity from the absence of several employees due to sick leave can, can be significantly less expensive than a possible downtime from closing an office site, entire plant or distribution center because of sick employees or from disin disinfecting the site. The third is restrict non-essential travel and promote flexible working arrangement. Travel has been linked to a number of cases of transmission COVID-19. Many companies have already implemented policies to restrict non-essential travel to protect their employees. Next, align IT system and support to involving work requirements as company increase remote work policies and flexible workforce arrangement, IT system and support will need to be aligned. The sudden increase in online activity can have big implications on system stability, network robustness, and data security, especially in parts of the world where telecommunication and system infrastructure are not as well developed. Companies will need to act quickly to ensure they have the system and support staff in place to ensure smooth operation as the workplace and workforce involved. Next, prepare succession plan for key executive position. This step is not absolute. As COVID-19 has spread to over 50 countries, there is increasing risk that key executive arriving in foreign location and required to be quarantined. The last is focus on cash flow. Companies should immediately develop a treasure plan for cash management. Extending payables where possible to conserve cash will be also important. A survey estimate that 85% of small medium enterprise will run out of cash within three months. And two thirds will run out of money in two months if the crisis doesn't abate. What should companies do after pandemic? The first is understand the demand impact specific to the business. When demand falls significantly, companies must quickly determine how they will respond from a sales and operation planning perspective. Some companies may be able to stimulate demand or sell available output, but at a different price. Another strategy would be to make decision with regard to the product portfolio that they will offer during the, the period of disruption. Whatever strategy will make sense for business, it, it, it is important that it be properly evaluated and that there is full alignment to the strategy and plan across the organization. The second is enhance focus on workforce or labor planning. As enterprises start resuming work in various regions, they need to consider how to restart business operation amid ongoing epidemic prevention and control measure, and also ensure they can return to a normal, healthy work rhythm as soon as possible. Quarantine and travel restriction mean that the time to ramp back up to full capacity will be much longer than normal for many facilities. Not only will this require additional attention to labor planning, but also additional attention to product quality as plants run with less than a full complement of worker. The next is update inventory policy and planning parameters. Companies have been implementing practices to reduce inventory across the supply chain 
and to statistically set safety stock to buffer normal demand and supply variability. Most companies won't have inventory buffer for the magnitude of disruption that will be caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. All companies need to quickly consider how they will refine their inventory strategy to mitigate the risk of supply shortage, balancing a number of factors such as assessed supply base risk, cash flow, and perishability. The next is prepare for potential channel shift. Consumer-oriented companies should assess the, the implication of potential shift of demand from traditional retail to online and move quickly to prepare. This could be a competitive advantage during the pandemic. Next, open channel of communication with key customer. Given potential shortage in inventory, communicate with key customer promptly to explore alternate supply arrangement and find ways to minimize losses and to avoid customer attrition due to this difficult time. As part, as part of this effort, companies should understand their contractual commitment to their customer and potential cost if not covered by force major. Next, prepare for the rebound. Companies that they are able to move more quickly than their competitor may be able to capture a large share of the pent up demand, solidify their relationship with their most important customer, and perhaps gain some new ones. Pricing strategy will be an important consideration as business gradually transition back to normal, both to address normal supply demand consideration as well as to maintain profitability while logistic costs and potential other costs will likely be volatile. The last is conduct global scenario planning. It will be important to update demand plans for a timing and volume perspective. The last is imperative for a new supply chain model. Supply chain have become highly sophisticated and vital to the competitiveness of many companies. But their interlinked global nature also makes them increasingly vulnerable to a range of risks, with more potential point of failure and less margin or error for absorbing delays and disruption. A decades-long focus on supply chain optimization to minimize costs reduce inventory and drive up asset utilization has removed buffer and flexibility to absorb the delay and disruption. COVID-19 illustrates how many companies may not fully appreciate their vulnerability to global shock through their supply chain relationship. Fortunately, new supply chain technology are emerging that can dramatically improve visibility across to the end-to-end -end supply chain and supports much more supply chain agility and resiliency without the traditional overhead associated with risk management technique. The traditional view of a linear supply chain and, and optimizing business is transforming into digital supply network or DSN, where full supply network to end-to-end -end visibility, collaboration, responsiveness, agility dan and, and optimization. Increasingly, this digital supply network are being built and designed to anticipate disruption and reconfigure themselves appropriately to mitigate their respective impact. Okay, maybe that's all what I can share to all of you. Thank you for your attention. Mr. David, I give it back to you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Rainisa, for your sharing and presentation. Now, we will continue to our second speaker, Dr. Rosemary Arseva, but I will introduce her more about her background first. Okay. Dr. Sefa is a professor of industrial engineering and former dean 
at the Kukongwe College of Engineering, De La Salle University, Philippines. She is the president of the Human Factors and Ergonomic Society of the Philippines, or SFESP, and from 2018 to until 2020, also served as the president of the ASEAN Council of Ergonomics and Design, or ACID, and the Southeast ASEAN Network of Ergonomic Societies, or SEANES. She has the IEA Technical Committee on Effective Design and one of the early researchers in this field. She obtained her doctoral degree at the Nanyang Technological University, Singapore. She is an ASEAN engineer and a professional industrial engineer. For Dr. Sefa, you can start your presentation. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, let me just share my screen. Um, okay, for, first of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, Ms. Christina of uh, Maranata Christian University for inviting me to, to deliver this uh, uh, short lecture on work from home ergonomics. I have uh, delivered this so many times and I hope that uh, this will help you when you work from home. Uh, in the Philippines right now, around 40% of the workforce are working from home. And before I prepare this PowerPoint presentation, I asked some of my friends to send me their pictures while they are working from home. And two of them have been uh, very kind to send me their pictures and this is how they look like. The person on the left here is a mother of two uh, uh, children. One is already working and the other one is still studying, as you can see. She is working, she's putting her laptop on top of the dining table. And uh, her position while working is not very suitable. And I have another friend here who is another faculty member. And he is working in his home and was able to do a makeshift workstation and he looks like this. I don't know uh, how you look like when you work in your home offices, but uh, I, su I suggest that after this talk, you ask somebody to take a picture of you so you can do your own assessment of your position. Uh, I hope that you will learn from what I will, I'm going to uh, relate to you in my lecture this morning. So uh, my agenda for today is uh, first, to explain the relevant ergonomics principles for working at home. Many people don't know what ergonomics is, but uh, I hope that many here would know because uh, many of you are industrial engineers. So uh, maybe I will just uh, explain uh, some of the most important ergonomic principles when you work from home. Uh, the second is to provide practical tips to minimize musculoskeletal disorders like what you can see here. This person is suffering from low back pain. Probably many of you are also suffering from low back pain due to too much sitting when you work from home. Uh, so let us start with a definition of ergonomics. Ergonomics in its simplest definition is fitting the task or the workstation to the person. Unfortunately, many of us fit to our workstation rather than the workstation uh, being designed to fit us. It's because uh, many of us are, uh, we allow ourselves to suffer. That's, that's what we do. We do not make design changes because uh, we allow ourselves to, to suffer from poor posture and other ailments. Uh, whereas, if you understand about ergonomics, you would know how to optimize human performance and promote safety. Uh, many of us do not understand how our position uh, affects our health and also our productivity. If we suffer from musculoskeletal disease, for example, uh, two years ago, I suffered from a shoulder pain, and that um, slowed down how I work. Um, for around two months, I tried to, you know, uh, live with the pain. But after two months, it has become debilitating and I had to go to the doctor. But um, 
and I'm already an ergonomist. I wonder how other people who do not who do not understand what ergonomics is and how ergonomics can help them would uh, face these kinds of problems. So uh, let us try to remember the practices that I am going to relate to you this morning. So what are the, these principles of ergonomics? I will only discuss three because we have very, very limited time and these are the most important. The first principle that we have to remember is to work in neutral postures. What are neutral postures? There are two, when you are standing up and when you are sitting down. Uh, when you are standing up and uh, doing computer tasks, then probably this is your neutral posture. Uh, this is called neutral because the position is of the least tension or pressure on our nerves, tendons, muscles, and bones. It means that in our neutral posture, we are relaxed. However, when we are typing, you can see that one, one part or this uh, lower part, lower arm is not very relaxed. That's why when we work like this, this lower arm should be supported. Uh, the truth is, while we are standing up, the neutral posture is when this lower arm is already also uh, here at this point. That is the neutral posture. And when you are seated down, this is the neutral posture. As you can see, if you are seated down like this, then your body is relaxed. But remember that this part of your body, the lower arm, should also be supported. Uh, a study was published in Ergonomics and Design, a very popular uh, magazine in ergonomics, on the lessons from the new normal. Uh, this survey was conducted in University of Cincinnati and so many people participated. They wanted to know what are the, what are the practices of people working at home. And uh, based on their findings, three quarters of monitors were laptops, which were too low relative to the workers' eyes. Many of us want to make use of laptops, right? Uh, because number one, it's mobile. It allows us to work anywhere, anywhere, anywhere and anytime. But um, not many people know how to set up a laptop workstation. That's why their posture is deviated from the normal. Remember the normal posture that I showed you like this? This is not how you look like when you use your laptop. And this is most probably your position when you work on your laptop. The laptop is too low, so your head is bent forward. And another thing is they found out that the chairs were the wrong height. Okay, probably they have good chairs like this. Not because you have good chairs like this, you're already able to, to have good postures, to have a good posture. For example, this person here. You can see that he has a very good chair and yet the posture is bad. How much more those people who do not have these very good chairs? Probably more than half of us would have chairs that are not this good. But don't be very sad. I've been in a company, a very, a very um, nice office in the business district here in Makati. They have these very good workstations. Everything is adjustable. The table is adjustable. The chair is adjustable. But when I requested the HR person to tour me around, I saw that many people are still in bad postures. Why is that? I have only one conclusion. Because they don't know the principles of ergonomics. Because if we know the principles of ergonomics, we can do with whatever we have because we will find a way to make our postures better. So as I've said, based on the study, chairs were the wrong height, probably because the people don't know how to adjust the chairs properly. Imagine buying like um, 1,000 US dollars worth of chair, and yet you still do not have the right posture. That is so sad and very unfortunate. Uh, to explain to you uh, the effect of our posture to our disc pressure, let me show you this picture. This is a product of many studies done on uh, the measurement of this pressure. Uh, as I've said, this is the neutral posture, and you will see that the, this, this pressure is 100%. That is the neutral uh, posture, 100%. 
But as we change our posture, the displeasure changes. Uh, based on these four pictures of people who are seated, the best one is this person that is seated at a 110 degrees angle from the uh, horizontal. Do you remember your teacher telling you when you were a child to sit up straight like this in the 90 degrees? I remember my, my teacher telling me, sit up straight. You know, the straight, to sit up like this. But this is not a good posture. The good, a good posture is really to maintain a, a posture of one, one, from 110 to 120 degrees because our, our spine has a natural S shape and it is only in this position that our spine is relaxed. So um, you will notice that if you go to a movie theater, for example, the chairs are not like this. The chairs are not very straight. Uh, the chairs would allow you to uh, stretch your back like this because that is how we relax. And the worst uh, position when we are sitting down is like this, when we are slouching like this. You can see that this pressure almost doubled at 190%. So um, if you want to have a good position, then you try to have a chair that will allow you to uh, stretch your back like this. Now, let me see or uh, what are your positions when you are working at home? Are you guilty of this? Uh, many of us, um, when we use our laptop, have this uh, position. Um, this is the position of a person who's trying to beat a deadline. You know, when you are trying to beat a deadline, you don't care about the time, you don't care about your posture, and you maintain this very this uh, very poor position for such a long time. And many of us are also using, for example, uh, tablets to work. And we put the tablet on top of our dining table, for example. So if, if that is the case, the screen is too low, and this is how you look like, especially when you are tall. And um, when you work, for example, using a desktop, sometimes you put your... Um, screen too far from you that's why you have a uh, you have your head bent forward like that because the monitor is too far what is the the rule when placing your monitor it should be at your arms length like that you stretch your arms like that and the monitor should be touching the tip of your hand so that you can see the monitor uh very well and if, if you still cannot see the monitor, it means that you need to get um, eyeglasses. I, uh, I have been a consultant of this uh, Australian company here in the Philippines, and the general manager knows a lot about ergonomics. And this general manager will go around the office and see how, their, how the employees look like when they work. Well, so when this person, when the general manager sees uh, somebody squinting like that, Oh, this, this general manager will say that you should get eyeglasses because you can already see your monitor. Many of us are not um, aware of this, that sometimes we are squinting. And that means we already, have, we already need to have eyeglasses. And uh, another problem that we encounter probably while working from home is shoulder pain. And this is because... Uh, maybe our chair is not uh, does not have armrest and so we work with unsupported arms you know if you work with unsupported arms like this the weight of your arm is borne by your shoulder their should your shoulder carry your whole arm and this causes shoulder pain and you can also see from here that the position of the mouse is not very good because it is too far and, it, and if you reach for that mouse, you will deviate from your neutral posture. Remember that you should not deviate from your neutral posture. Now, let us take a look at, uh, sorry, this uh, another person. Uh, what's wrong with this? 
if you see a person working like this using a laptop, it only means that the table is too high because she needs to stretch her, her arm like this. Because if the table is lower, then uh, this person would, would have um, the neutral posture while sitting down. So the secret is always to find the right height, the right height of our chair and the right height of our table. Unfortunately, um, in the market, we can buy height adjustable chairs, but we cannot find too many height adjustable tables. I find that weird that we buy height adjustable chairs, but we do not uh, have height adjustable tables. So this is what happens at home. We try to uh, conform to the height of our table. So for small people like me, you will set the height of the chair very high. And so your feet dangles. And if your feet dangles, that is also bad because it will uh, minimize the flow of blood on your thighs. And uh, after some time, your thigh will be numb already. So try to find the correct height. But if you do not have a height adjustable table and your feet dangle, for example, then probably you can make use of a footrest. If you do not have a footrest at home, then you can make, you can do with a makeshift footrest. You can probably use books. You can probably use um, anything where you can put your, your um, foot on top so that you are able to... Uh, to have a good posture for your feet. And um, I also suggest that if you decide to stand up while working, you try to maintain a position like this. Look, uh, look at this picture. The lower arm is um, supported. That is very, very important because if you do not support your lower arm while being in this position, you will have shoulder pain and sometimes you will also have a wrist pain because uh, this one will, the wrist will not be in contact with the table, as I will explain later. Now, if you have a height adjustable chair, this is how you have to, to adjust the chair. First, you have to search for your ideal height. And your ideal height is that height that is um, at the popliteal level. This is... This one with a circle is the popliteal level. It should be at that height. After adjusting your chair to that height, then if your backrest is also adjustable, you have to adjust it and let the backrest touch your lumbar area. The lumbar area is the one with the the lumbar area is the one with the dead here in your back. So try to find that place and adjust your backrest there. And if your armrest is also adjustable, you also adjust your armrest so that it is at your elbow height, like that. For those people who have laptops at home and want to work with laptops, this is a very good uh, setup of the laptop workstation. But probably will, you will tell me, oh, that is very expensive and I do not have all these uh, expensive uh, uh, gadgets to hold my monitor and my laptop. Yeah, I also don't have that much money to buy that. That's why I tried to um, have alternative designs for my workplace at home. So um, when you have a laptop, you should always have another keyboard because you need to put your laptop on top of a surface where you will be able to uh, sit up uh, sit and uh, stare straight at your laptop you know it should your your face should be uh, you should be facing your laptop but if you face your laptop and put it on top then the posture of your hand will be deviated and the only way to ensure that you have neutral posture while using your laptop is by buying another keyboard like this and to use a keyboard tray. When I bought this table, it does not have a keyboard tray, but because I know that I will be using my laptop uh, very often at home, then I had to ask a carpenter to put a keyboard tray 
uh, in this table so that I can work with neutral posture. And then if I want to stand up while working, I, I, I put my laptop on top of a small stool so that uh, I, I can look directly at my laptop. And then I bought a breakfast table like this and my, extend, my keyboard, my other keyboard will be here so that I can still maintain my neutral posture while standing up. If you use a tablet, for example, you have an iPad or other brands of tablet and you want to, for example, read something, make sure that you, you also maintain a neutral posture of your head by using books, for example. You can use a stand, you can buy a stand, or you can um, use books or, or other, um, for example, a stool in your home. Uh, where you can place your your tablet so that it will always be at your eye level make sure to always maintain the neutral posture of your head by placing uh, the laptop or your tablet at eye height level now you might think that this is very expensive i tried to find the alternatives from lazada i also looked at lazada in indonesia in the philippines uh, we can buy this breakfast table for 199 pesos. That is around 58,000 Indonesian rupiah. And uh, you can also uh, you can also have other uh, designs like this. It is again 199 pesos or 58,000 rupiah. And for the extended keyboard, that's only 370 pesos. So in the Philippines, you can have uh, both of these for a combined price of less than. 600 pesos so that's cheap compared to the comfort that you will get while working with your laptop the second ergonomic principle is to take posture breaks uh, the first principle is to have neutral posture but even if you have if you maintain neutral posture but if you don't take posture breaks you will still have uh, musculoskeletal disease because one of the risk factors in musculoskeletal disease is static posture. Okay, do you know that we spend 65 to 70% of the time sitting? Uh, we sit while we drive to our work, when we have meetings, when we are actually working, when we are eating. I assume that, there will, that we spend more time sitting right now when we are working from home. And uh, excessive sitting has, um, these health outcomes. Number one, if you sit a lot, uh, you are in danger of, number one, of course, gaining weight. And if you gain weight, you will have diabetes, you will have heart disease, and you will have muscle de degeneration, and some of the other musculoskeletal diseases that are related to excessive sitting. And worse is, you will have foggy brain, you know, you cannot uh, think very well. Probably this is the reason why many of our students that are working from home are complaining that they cannot catch up or they cannot cope up with the demands of the learning from home because they're always seated down. That's why this um, uh, ergonomist from Cornell University, Professor Alan Hedge, uh, proposed this 3S three, uh, three ideal work pattern. That consists of sitting, standing, and stretching. Those are the three S, sit, stand, and stretch. So for every 30 minutes, you spend 20 minutes sitting down in neutral posture, and then you spend eight minutes standing again in neutral posture, and then spend two minutes for moving and gently stretching. I know uh, this is very difficult to do, so me, uh, personally, I time myself. Um, I set my timer for 20 minutes and then 8 minutes so that I can move every 20, 20 minutes. I try to do that consciously. Because if you really care about yourself and your health, then you have to follow this. Um, I don't know if you know about Chevron. Chevron is one of the companies that has uh, the best practice in office ergonomics. You know, after two hours, uh, of working, they will lock your computer. You cannot work after two hours. You they will lock it for 15 minutes. 
And they want you to do other things uh, during this 15 minutes, like stretching. That's why in all the uh, workstations in Chevron, they have they, they have a post of um, different kinds of exercises that you can do for those 15 minutes. Because a little standing goes a long way. By the way, also in Chevron, the workstation in Chevron can be adjusted to a seated workstation to a, to a standing workstation. Um, so it's not only the chair that is adjustable. You can also adjust the table, especially where your uh, monitor is placed. If you stand while working up, it will increase your productivity. It will also decrease your your pains, the pains that you experience in your body, like your back and neck pain, it can also reduce fatigue because you are stretching. And very important is you can burn more calories each week. So if you want to lose weight and burn more calories, you don't even have to exercise. You just have to stand up while working. And uh, another good thing that you can prevent is musculoskeletal disorders like neck pain, shoulder pain, elbow pain. In the office, we co conducted a survey in some of the offices here in Makati. And for office workers, the top complaint is neck pain. Neck pain because uh, my analysis is uh, they do not set up their workstations very well. That's why they have neck pain. And they do not move their necks. They do not exercise. And this is followed by low back pain and shoulder pain. Low back pain is very popular among workers since um, so many years. But recently, when people are using laptops and computer work workstations, the pains are now have now gone to the neck and the shoulder. So this lecture is for you to minimize the occurrence of these complaints in the office. If you want to be... Um, you're reminded to stretch or to exercise. There are free software that you can download from the internet. For example, the work grade software, the stretch player or the no strain or RSI away. This is free. But in my experience, when people download this and they are in a hurry doing something, they're beating a deadline, most of the time they just press escape. And so uh, if you press escape, then you do not get the benefit of the software. That's why I like the intervention done by Chevron where they really lock the computer. I don't know of any other company that locks their computer just so that the workers will be forced to stretch. So these are some of the stretching exercises that I can recommend you to do. Uh, you can do this while uh, during the eight minutes that you, are, you need to stand up or even for two minutes. Just do these stretching exercises. This is downloadable from the internet. You can see that some of these exercises can be done even while you are seated down. It's like shaking your hands will help, especially if you feel already fatigue in your hands. Sometimes when we type so uh, for a long time, we feel this wrist pain. And uh, shaking our hands like that can really help. I've asked people to do this uh, stretching exercise and as stretching exercises and after they've done this they feel refreshed so ready to work again and then the third one is to minimize the pressure points the pressure we worry about these pressure points if we do not have a neutral posture something look at this you can see just from this picture that the table is too too high and because it's too high then your wrist will dangle like this. And that is the cause of the contact stress. And you can see also from here that the surface is not smooth. It is pointed and that will prevent the flow of blood from your wrist. So what, uh, what is my proposed solution there? Uh, of course, the first proposed solution is to work at appropriate height and uh, to probably buy something like this to protect you from the from contact stress. These are cheap. Uh, so for in the Philippines, for example, this is just 206 pesos or 58,000 Indonesian rupiah. Uh, very cheap uh, to improve your uh, posture. 
So always remember that education is key to health and safety. It's not having the most expensive table or the most expensive chair because as I've said, I've seen companies with very expensive office furniture and yet the workers are still complaining of poor posture. And that's the reason why I went to these companies to teach them how to maintain a good posture while working and to also exercise. So let us try to remember these three ergonomic principles. Number one is to work in neutral postures, to take posture breaks even if you are in neutral posture and to minimize pressure points. So let us be healthy while working. Uh, yes, it is okay to sit, but you spend one third of the time standing up or doing stretches. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Dr. Serva, for your very good, interesting presentation about work from home ergonomics. Now, we will continue to our third speaker, Dr. Wei Chung Xiang, but I will first introduce about his background. Dr. Xiang is an assistant professor in the Department of Industrial and System Engineering, Chongyuan Christian University, Taiwan. His present job duties are offer courses and in areas of quality five graduate students in thesis and independent research, conduct scientific and consulting research projects for national research institutes and private organizations. There were so many previous job experience. Some of them were Chief Operation Officer of Lumitech Corporation Taiwan in 2014 until 2015, Assistant Professor in Department of Industrial Engineering MSIT from 2000 until 2003, Teaching and Research Assistant at Pennsylvania State University USA from 1997 to 1999, and also industrial engineer in semiconductor fabrication, ERSO ITRI, Taiwan, from 1991 to 1992. His education background, Dr. Xiang was graduate from Tunghai University, Taiwan, for his Bachelor of Science in Industrial Engineering. Then she received her Master of Science from Texas Technological University, USA, in Industrial Engineering and her PhD is from Pennsylvania State University, USA, in, the, in industrial engineering in 1999. Dr. Xiang also has membership in professional organizations such as Ergonomic Society of Taiwan, joined in 2010, Chinese Institute of Industry in Taiwan. And Dr. Xiang has published so many articles and journals in the area of his expertise. Okay, so for Dr. Xiang, you are welcome to start your presentation. Thank you. Hi, <clears throat> hi everyone. Uh, I'm very uh, grateful that I have this opportunity uh, to talk about uh, something. Okay, I would like to uh, sh share my uh, screen. All right. All right, uh, I'm Wei Zhong Xiang. Uh, from the uh, Department of Industrial and Assistance Engineering uh, in Taiwan, uh, Chongyuan Christian University. As I said, I'm very grateful that uh, Maranatha University asked me uh, to uh, have this opportunity uh, to talk about something. The, my topic today is the implementation of, of standard operation procedures in pandemic situations. Uh, I, I hopefully uh, my presentation is clear because I can hear uh, echoes uh, in my earphone. Is, is everything okay, David? Yes, okay. Okay, All right. Uh, my outline uh, for today is I, I will talk a little bit about the pandemic situations. Then uh, I will talk a little bit about the background of my methods from the medical and the IE fields. And uh, I will uh, also uh, uh, talk a little bit about the quality, uh, quality management uh, for organizations and the 
individuals because my topic is about the uh, SOP, standard operation procedures. I think it's basically from the idea of quality management. And the last part is about my conclusions. Uh, let's talk about the pandemic situation right now. I got some um, uh, data from the WHO, the coronavirus uh, disease right now. Uh, the total confirmed case uh, of the world is more than uh, 1 million right now. And the this is about uh, is more than uh, 2 million. And the, the data is upgrade uh, in uh, January uh, 29th. So I, so I think the situation um, it's not, uh, does not go away yet. So we are still in the, uh, uh, in the situation of pandemics. And uh, I think the only way uh, to get rid of this uh, situation is when people get uh, vaccines or uh, vaccinized. So uh, from the, my data, from the, uh, our world in data.org and the, the the vaccination uh, percentage right now for like for every 100 person, uh, this you can see the list. The top one is from uh, Israel, so it's about like 50 percent uh, get get vaccines, and uh, the the second one is United Arab Emirates, and I think the first three countries are uh, not big country, and the Fourth one is the United Kingdom. It's about like uh, 11 uh, percent, all right. And then for United States, it's only uh, seven seven percent. And uh, for the whole uh, North American, it's only uh, less than five percent. So um, we are still uh, in the pandemic situation. Right. So my question is how to strive or mitigate uh, be, be, uh, before we get a uh, vaccine or vaccinate. I think uh, what I'm talking here is uh, everybody knows the answer. I uh, just uh, want to uh, repeat it again. Like uh, for individual, uh, we should uh, wear our face mask and uh, maintain social uh, distancing. And uh, for the personal hygiene, we just uh, wash our hands often and uh, take our body temperature every day to see our uh, health uh, condition. And uh, if, I, if we could, we can just work from home. For organizations, uh, we should uh, think about our standard operations. Uh, we should uh, re review that or create a light for safer uh, daily operations. I think the concept from IE can help. Right now uh, in Taiwan, uh, we have less than uh, 900 confirmed case. I think we follow uh, the basic idea and the basic rules. And uh, that's why I'm, uh, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about that. Like uh, in CYCU, uh, we have uh, this poster uh, uh, everywhere, it, uh, it just reminds people uh, or students or staff or faculties like uh, we should uh, uh, prevent uh, from the epidemic. We have uh, healthy lifestyles, maintain habits and uh, keep these uh, uh, disease away. And uh, here uh, I want to show you like uh, starting from uh, December uh, uh, First, uh, 2020, as uh, several uh, months ago, uh, we must wear a uh, mask in uh, several types of uh, public venues, like in the hospital, public transportation. Uh, when you uh, go to the restaurant, okay, uh, you're in school or in sport, right? And uh, in the religious and the worship place. So, uh, Right now it's very uh, enforced because in Taiwan, like today, the temperature is lower than 20 degrees. 
right now, the, I think the outside temperature in uh, in my city right now is like uh, 15 degrees, and uh, we think about the virus uh, are very uh, active, so we enforce this kind of rules. And the next one is all, another poster show you uh, in uh, at the CYCU again. We have uh, this uh, kind of announcement, like we have uh, wear a mask before entering uh, any uh, building, all right? And uh, for here, we also show you, uh, I think it, we talk about SOP, also show you like how to wear a mask uh, correctly, pro properly, and uh, remind people to uh, keep social distancing and uh, wash your hand or clean uh, your hands, all right? And even for our government, uh, they teach you how to wash your hand uh, correctly, right? They uh, show you like uh, you have to have like five steps when, she, when you wash your hands, like you uh, wet your hands first and rub with your soap and uh, rinse slide and uh, clean your uh, faucet and uh, then wipe, uh, wipe your hands clean. I think, uh, most people think about oh, all these are very uh, common and uh, you know and uh, very uh, simple, but uh, I think uh, that's the way uh, we do our daily life and uh, uh, keep the virus away. So uh, let me talk about a little bit about the background uh, from my thinking. Uh, first of all, from the medical field. Uh, there's a paper, general paper from the clinical infectious disease uh, in 2015. The title is like traffic control bundling is essential for protecting healthcare workers and controlling the 2014 Ebola, uh, Ebola uh, epidemic. And uh, the first author is from uh, is a medical doctor from Taiwan. And uh, I will just uh, point out several things uh, in this uh, journal paper. I think uh, three basic methods are right now uh, implement uh, in Taiwan to protect us from the uh, coronavirus. The first one uh, for the medical uh, or the for the hospital. The first one is like triage of patients into hospital. That that means you sorting the visiting uh, patients, right? Uh, see uh, if they are. Uh, if they have disease or they have symptoms of coronavirus or not. If it's not, then you can do the regular uh, visiting. The second one is like the zone of risk because the virus is a formite transmission and they spread a lot of very quick. So uh, you should uh, think about how to uh, defend yourself uh, from the virus. And uh, once you have the zone of risk, then you have to have the checkpoints uh, between these zones. So uh, when you move from one uh, the dangerous zone to the safe zone, you should uh, uh, clean your hands. So that's why uh, we have like hand disinfection with alcohol. So let me show you several pictures uh, in Taiwan. Uh, these are uh, old pictures in the summer uh, season. We have like uh, for the triage of patients, so we like uh, sorting the patients. We have a quarantine station uh, at, uh, outside the hospital building. And uh, when you enter the, uh, try to enter the hospital, you should be uh, sorting based on uh, the purpose of you visiting. And we have, we, we have so-called a TOCC. They will ask you several uh, questions of, of uh, about like uh, tra travel, uh, traveling history and occupation clustering and the, con uh, and the contact to make sure uh, you are okay, then you can enter the building uh, for uh, regular uh, visiting. Otherwise, uh, you are asked to, to be uh, quarantined or to take your uh, uh, sample to, for the testing. And uh, for the second part of zone of risk, uh, we should think about your area as like, uh, you have a like clean zone, and there's a green one, and uh, you have a transition one, uh, intermediate one, that's a yellow one, and uh, you have the contamination one, the red one. 
So you want to contain the virus uh, in the red zone, not spread out to the green zone. I think uh, for the hospital, uh, they have like so-called traffic control and a zone of risk. That's why uh, you can see uh, from this slide, you can see like uh, for the uh, patient rooms, it's painted in uh, red, okay? And uh, you have, uh, you know, you have the transition zoom or the yellow zoom here, and you have green zoom here uh, from the hallway to the nurse station. When you try to uh, move the patients to the patient room, you should follow the, the, you know, the, the red path. And it, for the nurse or doctors, you should go with this green path. Here, I'll try to point out in this design, there's one thing you need to uh, notice. Like here, you have an uh, interaction. Uh, so my suggestion is like, if you move patient from here and follow this path, after you move patient this way, you should uh, sanitize uh, this area with alcohol. And here I also uh, show you the third uh, uh, measure, like you have uh, checkpoints here. You see the uh, triangular one, that's all these are uh, checkpoints. The upper of workflow show you like when you uh, enter from the elevator or the stairway, and uh, you should uh, clean your uh, hands and uh, then you enter your nurse room or then uh, if you want to enter the patient's room, you should wear your PPE like personal protection uh, equipment. Then, uh, you know, uh, uh, wash your hands or clean your hand again, then uh, enter again, then enter patient's room because you don't want to bring the virus into a patient's room. In the same way, uh, when you treat the patient, when you want to move out, you should uh, clean your uh, clean your uh, hands again, then uh, enter the hallway, then remove your PPE, then uh, clean your hand again, then you can, you are safe uh, to enter the nurse room. I think that's the basic idea, like how uh, Taiwan uh, to, to treat with the virus. Okay, so we have like a hand uh, disinfection with alcohol dispenser. We can find that everywhere in the in the hospital. Okay, right now they have an automatic one. Uh, this one you use push, pull it, push this. But right now there are many um, uh, automatic uh, alcohol dispenser in Taiwan. So that's from the uh, medical field. How about the, from the uh, industrial engineering? I think most of uh, Participants are from industrial engineering. When you read, uh, watch the the pictures, I think you are you must very uh, feel very familiar, because we learn like a facility layout and the work design, and in that we have like a process chart, right? And we also have a flow process chart and a flow diagram. I think the the pictures are very similar to uh, to what what I show you. And uh, we also uh, learned the activity relationship chart uh, or the closest uh, ratings like AIOU ratings uh, in the facility layout. I think that's also uh, very good uh, to, uh, for the, it's a very good uh, analysis tool for, uh, for what I show you. And uh, we also have like a past planning of material handling. I think that's also very uh, useful uh, in uh, designing the system, your quality system, because uh, as I show you like the workflow and the, the path uh, moving the patients and how you enter the uh, nurse station or this kind of stuff. And uh, think that's for human. And also for materials, you also need those uh, use this as a tool for uh, for to analyze, and uh, also uh, all the the whole uh, concept is like for the uh, quality management. Uh, I think we all have ISO nine thousand series standards uh, to build our quality system, 
And uh, we also have like a process map in the six, six month. All right, as I show you, uh, is, this one is very uh, common uh, for the industrial engineer. Like we have a process chart, uh, flow process chart. Like we have like operation, movement, inspection, delay, and the uh, storage. You can this, uh, use this uh, flow pr process chart uh, to design uh, the work workflow, okay? And uh, we also have uh, this kind of flow diagram. Uh, this one is for uh, for the manufacturing plant. And uh, before we just talk about uh, how to move, uh, move the materials, okay? But uh, we can also use this uh, as a tool to think about uh, our, our path. So uh, my idea is like we treat the coronavirus as a defect product, all right? And uh, we, uh, we should think about a systematic way to to protect us or, or to, to, uh, to do uh, in this pandemic situation. So we should apply our, our quality system to pre prevent uh, the virus from entering or spreading in our organization or in our daily life. We think about like uh, the outside world is uh, like a contamination zoom. Then you should find a transition zoom, a yellow zoom for you. And you want to keep your organization as a clean Zoom. I think uh, I think the quality management system will be a good way uh, to do that. You should find a, a proper uh, SOP for you. Uh, this picture shows you uh, this in my uh, university. Uh, in my university, we have so many buildings. Uh, for as uh, as I show you before, like we have an announcement. Uh, a poster and uh, this one is an old picture like uh, when you try to enter uh, our building from this stairwell uh, we will uh, measure your temperature and we also have alcohol uh, dispenser here to clean your hands and uh, we measure your temperature if you have uh, fever uh, you are not allowed to enter the uh, building okay i think it's a common practice uh, in taiwan for a long time, okay. And uh, for the quality uh, management point of view, uh, for the human resource, uh, as uh, one speaker mentioned, like many organizations right now in Taiwan, we ask employees to work in uh, separate locations and uh, they are not allowed to group together or uh, meet together uh, you know, in person. As uh, you, you just build out your zone of uh, risk, you want to uh, uh, charge or sorting your people from spreading the uh, virus. And uh, many organizations also uh, separate the employees into several groups and uh, they work in office or work from home based on the uh, group schedule. Some groups uh, may work uh, at home and some work uh, may go to the office and work there. So uh, that's the way uh, they just build up uh, their, uh, their groups and uh, separate from spreading the virus. And uh, if you are a quarantine one, uh, you, uh, you must work from home, you just stay at home. I think that's, that's the way uh, we in Taiwan would do uh, very uh, basic things and uh, we follow the SOPs, that's why uh, we only have less than 900 uh, confirmed cases right now. And uh, most of them, I think more than 50% of them are from, uh, from outside, our, uh, our, outside our boundary. They just take the airplane to enter uh, our, 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 uh, our Taiwan island, then uh, they just bring the uh, virus there. I think for the local case, it's uh, less than 50%. I think it's less than uh, 400. Uh, local case in Taiwan. And also for the quality management point of view, like uh, we should have a uh, uh, new SOP for materials. Like uh, as I say, you should virus as a defect product. So you have an incoming quality control. You inspection, not just for the quality characteristic, but also including the format. So you may need some uh, good uh, uh, equipment or some uh, inspection uh, 
uh, to do that, okay? And uh, you should have a QR code system for identification or registration. Uh, right now in Taiwan, uh, you, when you enter some building, they may ask you uh, have your QR code for you to check uh, your condition, right? And uh, for the materials also, you should uh, have a way to trust back uh, the trust back the material source. So uh, for that case, uh, as one speaker also mentioned, that uh, IT improvement are required uh, to do all this stuff. That's why uh, many um, company uh, right now, uh, electronic company or IT, IT company in Taiwan, they also uh, make a lot of money uh, during uh, this uh, pandemic situations because they make a lot of uh, IT uh, products. So for my conclusion, IE concept and the methods are useful in helping to develop SOPs for the pandemic situations. For existing one, just try to revise them and uh, uh, developing a new one if you don't have one. Uh, just uh, in my last uh, talk, I said, uh, just keep safe and uh, healthy, all right? That's all my uh, presentation. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Xiang, for your presentation about the implementation of SOP in the pandemic situation. Okay, for all participants, since our three speakers have finished their presentation, then we will continue to the second session, which is the Q&A session. I have seen some questions in the chat box. The first question is from Ms. Inda from Maranatha Christian University. This question is for Dr. Sefa. How to fix a posture that is already bent over? What is your opinion, Dr. Sefa? Hello. Okay, Hello? Dr. Sefa, uh, there is the first question for you. Yeah. How is to fix a posture that is already been over? What is your opinion, Dr. Sefa? Uh, can you give me... Okay, um, can, you, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, okay. Dr. Sefa. Uh, the question is how to fix a position that is already bent over. Is it the body that is bent over, sorry, I, I, I'm not, it says um, that is already bent over, right? So is it because the body is already bent over or the position is always bent over because of the setup of the workstation? Uh, the question is not very clear to me, sorry. But um, if, if, the position is bent over because of the workstation, then uh, maybe uh, he or she can set it up the way I discussed in my lecture to make sure that uh, the laptop, for example, is placed in a high position where uh, it is at eye level so that you don't have a bent position. Uh, I invite this person who asked to um, explain further the meaning of bent already. Is it because the body is bent uh, in, a, in a natural way? Yeah, so that I can explain better my answer. Thank you for that question. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Sefa, for your response. Uh, maybe we will continue to the next question first. Uh, the second response from our participants is uh, it's not a question, actually. It is a compliment for Dr. Sefa. It is from Miss Maria Teresa Mendoza. She said that she was enlightened with your presentation, Dr. Sefa. Thank you and God bless. Okay. Uh, the next question is from Miss Elaine Rodriguez. It is also for Dr. Sefa. May I ask if lying on your stomachs while listening to the lecture can also be considered neutral posture? 
Okay. Um, what do you think, Dr. Sefa? All right. When you lie down and for when you lie down and you try to view something, then your position is not neutral because what you tend to do is to uh, hyper extend your neck like that, and that is neutral. That's not neutral posture. Actually, is it's a bad posture. It can only be neutral if you are able to uh, have a neutral position of your neck. But if you are lying down and you know you're trying to view something and you per, you hyper extend your neck, that's bad. So okay, thank I you, Dr. Sefan, for your answer. Okay, thank you, Dr. Sefa, for your answer. Uh, we continue to the next question. This is from Ms. Kennedy Sumarli from Maranatha Christian University. The question is for Ms. Rainisa. The first question is, what are your biggest challenges, especially in the implementation of industrial engineering during this pandemic? As we know, we are entering the era of industrial revolution 4.0, as government mentioned. That's the first question. And the second question is, any suggestion for the investor or shareholder who own the business what should they do during and after this pandemic? What is your best advice? Okay, uh, what, what is your opinion, uh, Ms. Kainita, for this question? Okay, uh, thank you for the question, Mr. Kennedy. Uh, I think the biggest challenge is, in my opinion, is about information technology because it needs a big investment. And some company are not ready for digital supply chains like I mentioned before. But this condition, I think, forced the companies to prepare about digital supply chains. And for the second question, I think for the investor who own the business, is uh, need to understand uh, their demand and their own situation. Uh, what uh, the business do is for survive in this pandemic, I think. I think it's my answer, Mr. David. Okay, thank you, Ms. Renisa, for your response. Uh, and the next question is from Ms. Christina Wirawan from Maranatha Christian University. This question is for Dr. Sefa. She said that uh, thanks for a very useful presentation from Dr. Sefa. Due to this pandemic, students learn remotely using computers. In terms of ergonomics, what is the maximum daily of students staring at a computer screen? And how to reduce the bad effects on the eyes due to constantly staring at a computer screen? Thank you. What is your opinion, Dr. Sefa? Um, let me answer first the second question on what to do so that you can rest your eyes. When you look at the computer screen, you are looking at a very uh, short distance, right? So if you want to rest your eyes, you have to find a, a green, something green that you can look into. Probably you can uh, look outside so that you can exercise your eyes from looking uh, at a short distance and then looking or to a far distance. So that's one way of doing it. Uh, looking at uh, something green, uh, do not look at the screen. Sometimes when, when students rest, they play games. It's the same thing. So you're not looking at the computer, but you are looking at your phone. It's the same thing. So that's not resting. So if you want to rest your eyes, don't look at the screen, any screen, not your phone. Look outside, probably. Uh, as to the number of minutes, I think that uh, the students can also follow uh, the guideline that I have given. Um, you rest, they can rest their eyes probably every 30 minutes uh, by uh, trying to take a break. Maybe we can tell our faculty members to also do the same because the students cannot rest if the faculty members do not give them time to rest, right? So this is not only for the students, but also for faculty members. We need to rest probably every 30 minutes, but uh, I have to find uh, studies on that uh, to give a more 
uh, scientific answer. This is just my opinion, but uh, I have to find studies that will uh, give scientific um, recommendations. Sorry, I, I don't have those studies at this moment. Okay, thank you for your answer, Sefa. Um, the next question, uh, it is from Mr. Chandra Arko from Maranatha Christian University. This question is for Dr. Syam. Regarding implementing a new system during work from home, this pandemic will certainly have a profound impact on all sectors on the economy. One of the biggest challenges is implementing new SOP or system for employees working from home. How can we, how can we respond to this challenge so that the system that has been created can be applied properly, especially in terms of monitoring? Hi, uh, what do you think, Dr. Siang? Okay, uh, thank you for the questions. I think uh, I, for me, I think we should, uh, uh, for different companies or for different organizations, they may have different uh, SOP and uh, different answers. And uh, for uh, some manufacturing plants, it's, uh, there is uh, no way for the operators to work from home because you have to operate uh, the machines to do the jobs. So if uh, if you are auto uh, fully automatic, then that will be okay. You can do light. Otherwise, there is no way uh, for the uh, operators uh, to do the to operating the the machines work from home. That's one that's one part. Then for other uh, other kind of jobs, maybe for the uh, for the office job, then uh, you may uh, work from home. Then. Uh, for the manager, you should uh, think about uh, your task and uh, you should divide uh, your tasks into uh, several groups and uh, you should have like a daily uh, uh, schedule and a daily uh, progress or daily tasks to assign to your, uh, to, to assign to your workers or employees. Then you can monitor that uh, based on their outcomes. I think uh, it's not the, uh, uh, for work on phone, it's not just uh, use a video there and to monitor uh, what they are doing. I, I don't think that will work. Uh, I think you just set set the uh, you know the goals, uh, daily goals for your for your employees, and uh, then you uh, then you uh, see the outcome. Uh, I was uh, I think that will be uh, good enough, and uh, then you can make progress uh, based on that. So my answer is. Uh, very uh, straightforward. Uh, depends on what kind of work uh, they are doing, and uh, then you think about uh, how to evaluate their uh, performance. Uh, then that's my answer. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Xiang, for your response. Uh, next question is from Mr. Anton Sobandi. This question is for Ms. Rainisa. The question is, what strategy of forecasting for any market, offline store, online store, and omnichannel in this pandemic period? Because we, we know the pandemic effect is bring a new trend area or panic buying. What do you think, Ms. Rainisa? Uh, okay, thank you, Mr. Anton, for the question. Uh, I think forecasting is always need, even in pandemic situation. Uh, you can use quantitative forecasting uh, like time series, uh, you could do, you could use that, but maybe support by qualitative forecasting for effect to selling. This is for the first question and the second the second question. For the panic buying, I think uh, we must uh, we must ask the government to support that uh, informate infor, infor, informate uh, the citizen uh, that supply is enough for uh, Indonesia. Uh, and I think it will be help for uh, panic buying. Maybe it's my opinion, Mr. David. Okay, thank you, Ms. Renisa, for your answer. Next question is from Mr. Agus Priyono. There are three questions for each speaker. The first question is for Ms. Rainisa. 
Is it data analytic can be considered a critical factor in the success of increasing sales in the COVID-19 pandemic? Thank you. Sorry, could you repeat it? Okay, the question for Mr. Nisa is, is it data analytic can be considered as a critical factor in the success of increasing sales in the COVID-19 pandemic? Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Agus Priyono. Uh, I think uh, from this situa pandemic situation, uh, the data uh, is uh, really need uh, to analyze uh, and need, uh, like, like mentioned, uh, for forecasting uh, and the the accurate maybe uh, need need to for data. I think that's Mr. David. Okay, so data analytics is a critical factor for the success of increasing sales. Uh, okay, thank you, Miss Rainisa, for your response. The second question is for Dr. Siam. What are considered critical success factors for controlling the spread of COVID-19 virus in Taiwan? Thank you. Hello. Uh, I think uh, in Taiwan, we are doing everything uh, from the basic. Okay, and uh, we follow government's uh, instructions. Like as I uh, said uh, in my presentation, like. We, we have to uh, wear masks and uh, in the public uh, venues and uh, we we clean our uh, hands very often. We also uh, measure our body temperature every day. I think uh, basically what's, uh, what, that's what we do. And uh, I think somebody mentioned like at the CYCU, uh, we don't, uh, I, I think most uh, university in Taiwan, we, we don't, uh, we just uh, right now it's uh, in the winter break, but uh, in the in the semester during semester, okay, we 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 meet at the normal uh, style like we you know we go to the classroom, and uh, every uh, everybody uh, wear a mask and uh, we measure the temperature. If you don't feel well, you just stay at home. I think uh, basically uh, we just follow the idea as I present. Like uh, uh, you just uh, sorting. Uh, like no uh, healthy people can go to the uh, public and uh, stay there. And if you don't feel well, you just stay at home. I think basically that's the way uh, we treat with this uh, situation. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Siam. And the last question is for Dr. Sefa. To measure the accuracy of ergonomics, can it only be done from visual observation by adjusting the position? Or maybe there are additional methods or maybe medical devices for measuring ergonomics. Thank you. Um, do, do you hear me well uh, when I speak? Yes, okay. we can hear you. Um, yes, there are, there are ways to do that. Um, this is what I suggest. As I have, have said in, in the beginning of my lecture, I challenge everyone to ask somebody to take a picture of them while working and then while they are working they can get the angles uh, formed by the by the different parts of their body because there are in the literature there are guidelines on what should be the angle for example the neutral angle of our head to our neck should be between 0 to 15 degrees so if you want to be accurate about it then you can probably take a picture and then print your picture and then get the the angles. That's that's how how it is done. And um, but then not many people would be willing to do that. So uh, improving one's posture should be done uh, unconsciously, and this can only be accomplished very well if you have designed your workstation so that. Your posture will be neutral when you, you when you use this workstation. In other words, you have to design the workstation so that you are able to maintain that posture that is required. In that way, you don't have to be very conscious about uh, maintaining a neutral posture because the design of the workstation already helped you to maintain that posture in the first place. 
So this is what we should do as industrial engineers, right? To solve the problem by design. And by designing our workstation to fit us, then we don't even have to use this uh, um, very uh, techy, a very technical way of doing it. I, I think that's uh, my answer to design uh, the workstation so that it will fit you. So you will be unconscious and yet your position will be good. Okay, thank you, Dr. Sefa, for your answer. And since time is running so fast, I think the next question is our last question that we can accommodate today. So this question is from Mr. Musran Munizu. The question is for all speakers. I represent creative industry owners. Could you give us some tips for improving sales profit? The from Hasanuddin University, uh, Makassar, Indonesia. For Ms. Renisa, Dr. Seva, and Dr. Siang, uh, you all are welcome to answer this question since the question is for all speakers. Maybe from Ms. Renisa first. Uh, okay. Thank you, Mr. Musran. Uh, I think uh, the tip is uh, for creative industry. Um, try to digital supply chain uh, network because uh, the habit uh, offline offline shopping is changed into online shopping and try to uh, move in into e-commerce, I think. Maybe that's my answer, Mr. David. Okay, thank you, Ms. Renisa. Next, uh, Dr. Sefa, what do you think? Any tips for the creative okay, industry uh, in the pandemic era? The, 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 the question is about increasing sales and profit, right? Uh, and yes. that's not, although that is not related to my talk, uh, I think um, the most logical answer is to, to sell what people need at this time. And to sell it online, as what Miss Rainy is, uh, because the, the market has changed. Uh, it has changed so much. So we cannot do what we have been doing when the pandemic is not yet there. We have to change our business model. I think that is my su suggestion. To, to, to find a business model that will fit the pandemic. Okay, thank you, Dr. Sefa. Uh, next, what do you think, Dr. Xiang? Okay, I think uh, it really depends on the country, okay? But uh, I agree uh, with those two uh, speakers because uh, for individuals, I think the people change their behavior or uh, like buying behavior and uh, consuming uh, behavior. I think that's true, but uh, that's for individuals. Uh, but for the companies, uh, like in Taiwan, many companies make a lot of money because they are IT related. Okay, so they, they, they make like, uh, in, uh, you know, I, IT products and they, they have like uh, IT platforms like, uh, like Uber Eats or whatever, uh, you know, those kind of uh, present uh, sales like the, for the carriers. They also uh, make a lot of money, but also but for some companies like they go to the uh, traditional way, retailers, and they, they, I think their sales are, are limited. So I agree with two speakers. You should uh, find uh, uh, the behavior right now for the consumers, uh, like e-economics e and uh, logistics uh, distributions. And uh, I think all these uh, make a, a lot of money right now in Taiwan, okay. Okay, thank you, Dr. Xiang, for your response. So uh, now we are at the end of all sessions for today's seminar. Once again, thank you for Ms. Rainisa, Dr. Sefa, and Dr. Xiang for your knowledge sharing today. I believe that we all are enlightened today uh, for the, uh, from the perspective of industry engineering uh, as uh, we all are. Uh, so now uh, I will also, thank you for all participants for your response and questions. So I give it back to Ms. Christina.
Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. David, for the amazing Q&A session and also for the leading of the seminar. And also, thank you also for the uh, speakers here. And as the appreciation, uh, I would like to invite uh, Director of Universitas Kristen Maranata to take a pic uh, to take a picture together with the speakers and also the moderator. Okay, just give your best smile here because it's the documentation of the collaboration of the three universities here. Okay, I will count one, two, three. Wait, wait. Oh, I just pasted on the word first. <laughs> wait. Okay, one more, one more. Okay. Take a look at the camera, please. Okay, one, two, three. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Maybe our rector will have like a closing speech a bit. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, everyone, especially to our guest speakers, Dr. Xiang, Dr. Rosemary. It's been very great to have this uh, seminar. Of course, also Miss Rainisa. I am her rector, but never met her <laughs> so far. Okay, again, uh, all the very best. Uh, I hope our collaboration can be continued in the near future. Yeah. So in this pandemic, uh, it is kind of uh, disguise. Yeah. But we have so many blessings, yeah? blessings in disguise. And we hope we can again continue our cooperation uh, for our better future together. Thank you very much. See you all. Stay healthy and happy. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Vidyan Toro, for the closing speech. And right now, we are now at the photo session together uh, with uh, to celebrate our diversity here. So please open your camera and to give your best smile for this documentation. And freestyle, yeah? Oh, freestyle. Okay, okay, freestyle. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait, 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 wait. Uh... I will put in the gallery view. And right now we have 13 windows here of the participants. So I hope you can hold your best smile until I finish all of the documentation because I don't know which windows you are in. Uh, you, hope, you have to hold your smiles maybe around three minutes, but I hope it's okay. <laughs> okay, one. Wait, 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 wait. There's a chat. Wait. Uh, yeah, okay. One. Two, three. Yeah. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. It's only one uh, uh, windows. The second one. Still give your best smile. Okay. One, two, three. Wait, wait, wait. There are only two. Yeah, and then the third one. Okay. One, two, wait, one, two, three. Yeah. Wait, and the fourth one. I hope you can still endure how to give your best smile. Wait, wait. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. Wait. It's a bit difficult to take picture on this pandemic because there are so many windows over here and I have to move my fingers around. Yeah, and it's the fifth slide. Okay. One, two, three. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry to torture you. And it is the sixth slide. Okay. One, two, three. Six slides. Yeah. And it is the seventh slide. Okay. One, two, three. Wait. 
I will change this to the Indonesian language right now. Satu, dua, tiga. Yeah, wait. It's now for the nine slide. I will change it to Tagalog mood. Isa, dalawa, tatlo. I hope I pronounce it well. Okay, and the 10 slides, three more slides to go. E, er, sad. Wait, wait, wait. Two more slides. Okay. The 11 slides. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Last slide, finally. Okay, one, two, three. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, everyone. And yeah, thank you. And I also uh, will put the link of our feedback survey in the chat box. Yeah, and I will give it uh, approximately two minutes to fill it currently. And the each certificate will be sent to your email registered in this feedback survey. Now wait. Yeah.
Okay. Uh, finally, we come to the end of our seminar. We would like to say thanks again for our honorable speakers and also the moderator and also the director of Universitas Christian Maranata, or we can call it in the English version as Maranata Christian University, Bandung, Indonesia. And we also thank you for the speakers and the moderator for the informative knowledge that has been shared. Hopefully, the presentation will be fruitful for everybody. And we started the seminar with prayer. So we also end the seminar for thanking God for uh, his guidance. I will lead in Christian way and the rest could follow in your own faith. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for a successful seminar. We know that you have blessed us, hence the success. Make you blessing us and we go out this venue and apply we have learned in our profession. Grant that we do this fully aware that this is not for ourselves that we learn, but for the service of other people. All this we pray and offer to you. Amen. Okay, thank you again uh, for the attention, everybody, and keep safe and healthy. Terima kasih. Maraming salamat. Shie shie. And see you in our next event. Sampai jumpa. Makita tayo. Chai Chen. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you so much.